and one of the first big K-pop news in 2021, GOT7 would leave JYP Entertainment. On January 10th, JYP Entertainment officially announced the breakup as GOT7 would leave as a full group. This would lead to a wave of shock and disbelief among many K-pop fans. Ever since last year in 2020, many international K-pop fans had this inkling that GOT7 might leave JYP Entertainment. Many GOT7 fans, also known as Agase, thought that each member might go their separate way, that they didn't get many opportunities within JYP in the last year or two, that JYP was concentrating on his newer groups, leaving GOT7 in the wind. These fans thought that JYP Entertainment was dragging out GOT7's eventual departure from the label, but hoped it would all be a ruse, that JYP had plans for the seven members. But that was not the case, as those fears of leaving JYP would become a reality in early 2021. When JYP's personal social media accounts started unfollowing some of the members, fans picked up on this quick. Bam Bam would later have a response on Twitter that was pretty much meh and who knows. When JYP unfollowed some of the members, the members would share the hashtag GOT7Forever, showing that the GOT7 members are still united, despite their boss unfollowing some of the members. It's interesting, because the JYP social medias still follow the GOT7 members members at the time of this video, and JYP himself still follows many former JYP singers, so JYP unfollowing some of the GOT7 members is quite telling. I never understood a K-pop company and its former members unfollowing each other on social media if it was mutual and they left on good terms. Groups leave their labels all the time, but I feel a company and their former idol members can still stay on good terms and still be professional with one another. From all the news that came out thus far, it feels that JYP and GOT7 left on a less than graceful split. Because all these hints would lead to its obvious conclusion. Korea media company Dispatch was among the first to report that JYP would be parting with GOT7 on January 19th, 2021. The 35th Golden Disc Awards would be their last major show for the group. In the days after GOT7's announcement to leave JYP, it was pure speculation by fans until Mark's dad actually confirmed it with a simple the truth on Twitter, setting off a spark among the Agase or GOT7 fans that there's a lot more to GOT7's separation from JYP than just simply their contract ending. The original plan post JYP was to stay as a group and find a new label to sign as seven members. It was reported that the GOT7 members were tight and wanted the group to be all or nothing. Yet when the members couldn't agree on their new agency, they would all pick different labels, but vowed not to do the word that starts with the D that's sacred to all K-pop fans, disband. On January 19th, the members would release a letter to the Agase on how they wouldn't be renewing their contract with JYP Entertainment, that they appreciated their support throughout their career, that the group would stay together as GOT7, but would just leave JYP, explore solo careers, and to cheer on the members as they all do their individual activities. Jackson would continue to do his global activities under his own label, Team Wang in Korea. Youngjae and Jackson would also sign with Sublime Artist Agency and would get a warm welcome right away. Bam Bam will do activities in both Thailand and Korea and is in talks to sign a contract with Make Us Entertainment. JB is being scouted by a global music label as well as a hip-hop company. Jin Young signed with BH Entertainment to further his acting career. Yoo Gyum is also pursuing a hip-hop career and had final discussions with the Jay Park-led AOMG. And Mark will be going back to Los Angeles to spend time with family, do solo music in the US, and start a YouTube channel, which already looks promising. Mark opened up a brand new YouTube channel and already has 1 million subscribers. He released his first video, a short one, thanking his fans for going over the 1 million sub milestone. Welcome to the YouTube channel. I want to thank you guys so much for subscribing. Um, I wasn't going to be posting any videos, but I just wanted to do a quick uh, little update. And this is even more impressive as Mark just opened a channel in January 2021. Currently, the guys are able to keep their GOT7 name, so they're still a group with their brand name, since all of them left JYP. If one or more members actually stayed on the label, then they would keep the GOT7 names, not the departing members. But while the group can technically perform together, the odds of that aren't great. Since the members aren't sharing a label, as well as each member doing their own thing, it will be difficult for them to perform as a group, to coordinate their schedules on time. Heck, Bam Bam, Jackson, and Mark will be out of Korea for long periods of time, making it even harder to perform as GOT7. As history has shown us with past disbanded groups, it doesn't look good for the group to continue their singing career after they left their original label. So while GOT7 is not disbanding, it's gonna be tough to keep doing GOT7 as a group. For now, I'll assume that the members will all do their separate activities, and if they wanna do things as GOT7, then that's an added bonus. Now, I was very fortunate to attend a pre-debut of GOT7 during January 2014. 
Now, I really wished I took a picture of the members, but unfortunately, I didn't. Now, the only proof that I had that I actually was at the pre-debut is that I had some friends that worked at JYP at the time. And here are their business cards. Right here. As a JYP representative told me at the event, GOT7 would be this multinational group hailing from different countries, bringing different styles and different cultures together. And it would be based around slick dance moves and upbeat catchy bops. They would be the first male group since 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. and would be the new male representative for JYP Entertainment, ushering a new age of K-pop with their debut song. And after watching them before Girls, 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 I knew that JYP had another talented group that would take the K-pop world by storm. My JYP friends told me that the company wanted to center all their male activities through GOT7, that their style of street dancing and martial arts moves incorporated into their choreography, they would stand out in the competitive K-pop world. For seven years, their career would take them to performing in Korea, Japan, Europe, Australia, North America, and South America. They would have a big fan base internationally and would be JYP's premier boy group for much of the 2010s. The group would be at their peak, touring often, producing a slew of bangers, and hitting on the top 10 on the Billboard charts. Songs such as Fly, You're Calling My Name, and Never Ever all hit high MV views, good sales, and were trending in Korea at one point. And hey, I can't blame the Agassiz for supporting GOT7 when they have bops like this. They were among the most popular groups that were trending in 2017. What's even more impressive is that during their later years in 2019 and 2020, GOT7 still put up high music video views, since most usually suffer from much lower sales and music video views before fading into obscurity, showing that the group's career was nowhere near dead or on a steep decline when they left JYP Entertainment in January 2021. GOT7 is also known as one of the most down-to-earth, funniest groups that jokes around often. I caught a glimpse of this when I briefly met them. They're really cool guys. Today, many of the Agassiz fans were elated and happy to see GOT7 leave JYP, to see where it'll go and see their true future potential. It was a great run for the seven guys, and I'm always humbled to have seen them during their pre-debut. Yet, I felt that GOT7 didn't get to leave gracefully and stay cool with their former label, like Sistar did years before. GOT7 is another case in K-pop that begs the question, why do popular top K-pop groups disband? Now, you can understand a small label disbanding since they don't have the resources, nor the clout, nor branding to branch out and get known. Yet GOT7 is different. They were backed by one of the big three. They had a decent following in Korea and a huge following overseas. They had the massive funding, marketing, and training to back up the group. This was not an unknown group by any stretch. But the K-pop life is a tough one. It's the very reason why the seven-year curse, a widely held belief in K-pop, where K-pop groups don't last past seven years, usually spells the end of the group, no matter their popularity. So here are some major reasons how even a popular group from the big three did leave or disband without getting past that seven-year curse. One of the perks of being a popular K-pop group is that you have a lot of screaming fans. One of the downsides of being a popular K-pop group is that you have a lot of screaming fans. A big part being a K-pop star is pleasing the fans, attending numerous meet and greets, staying active on social media, and being energetic in concerts and music shows, and sometimes being chased by zealous, crazed, stalkerish fans called sasangs. It's a tiring job to always be happy and positive in front of the millions of fans around the world, where the official motto is, the fan is always right. At the very worst, one mishap or rude interaction with a fan could potentially end an idol's career. And at the very best, idols are forced to apologize in public. The endless cycle of studying languages, practice, making a new song, attending music shows, having fan meetings, having a concert tour, and repeat can be very exhausting. And oftentimes, there's little to no freedom. Many K-pop stars aren't allowed to date, have their own social media, Twitch, and YouTube channels as well, as they're expected to focus only on their K-pop careers. And they often can't go out in public as many times they'll be quickly mobbed by fans, forcing many idols to cover their face or hide. Now multiply the schedule every year, and you'll see how this lifestyle can tire out even the best of K-pop stars fast. As K-pop stars go through the meat grinder called being a K-pop star, 
they also get tired of singing the same style of songs. They want to have creative input in their own music, their own lyrics, and in their own MV, but idols rarely get that freedom when first debuting, whether it's from a big three company or a small indie label. In most cases, when a K-pop group is formed, the CEO, music director, and producers decide what a K-pop group sings. The members usually have little to no say in the musical direction. That explains why you see some K-pop members that are mismatched and don't fit at all in their given genre. You'll see K-pop idols that are good at rapping or rock music doing bubblegum pop instead. One example being Card Soman, who was in both cutesy pop pop group's Purdy and April as its leader. She left April to go to Card, where she would fit in a lot better with the badass girl crush concept, alongside with Card's hard-hitting EDM and hip-hop genres. <laughs> One big reason that Soman left the pop genre was that she wanted to explore new music that she felt more comfortable in singing. And that's why when these K-pop idols leave their original group years later, they often shift to new music in their second label. Music that they always wanted to do, but could never do until leaving the K-pop bubble. Outside of music, many idols want to pursue acting in K-dramas and movies, be a TV host or MC, or pursue another creative endeavor. These idols realize that the K-pop world often doesn't give them that creative freedom. As mentioned earlier, Mark's dad's tweet called out the mistreatment of his son and the rest of the GOT7 members, which sent shockwaves within K-pop circles. Now to be fair, we don't know how or who mistreated the GOT7 members, or if JYP was personally involved, as he has a team taking care of the members, and JYP himself being busy with other activities. Yet, there is some evidence again that JYP may be involved when he unfollowed Mark, Jin Young, and Bam Bam after the GOT7 departure was announced. Youngjae, in turn, unfollowed JYP, and both him and Bam Bam deleted a group photo with JYP. I know this sounds like high school drama with who's following who on social media, but in this case, it does have some merit. People in the industry follow others whom they respect, whom they see as musical peers. So to hit that unfollow button is the equivalent to dissing that particular artist and cutting off ties. In any case, if JYP was involved in this mistreatment is true, this could hit JYP Entertainment's reputation greatly. As for mistreatment itself, it's a serious issue within the K-pop industry, and it can mean many things. Most people associate mistreatment as constant berating, body shaming, and insulting idols, which are all horrible. But there's other forms of being abusive towards K-pop idols, withholding their payment, not giving idols new songs for a long time, not giving idols opportunities outside of their group, and not letting idols build a brand for themselves could be considered mistreatment as well. We don't know exactly what Mark's dad meant by the mistreatment endured by his son and Mark's fellow members. And perhaps this mistreatment may be public in the future. But for now, the members believe that they were disrespected by their former company and had to leave, to the delight of their fans. During a K-pop group's career, they'll hit a peak where they're a lot more popular. Their MVs hit a spike in views, their concerts sell out, you'll see them often on music shows, and you'll see them being talked about around the country. This peak often happens around a group's second to fourth year. After this peak, most groups tend to go downhill as newer younger groups debut and take the spotlight off this group. Every couple years, new groups replace the hot trending groups, such as the examples here with Inhypen and Secret Number. K-pop fandom culture is always looking for the next new group to stand, and thus, the average K-pop fan has a shorter attention span. This is why K-pop groups will seemingly disappear a year or two after they were the hottest group prior. The truth is, K-pop is a very attention-based genre, where it's hard to stay relevant for several years, and this very attention is why many groups don't survive the seven-year curse. When a group realizes that they're several years past their peak, and trust me, all groups can feel this without seeing any numbers, they have a decision to make. Do they continue a group and hope to hit a second peak, or do they call it quits and start planning for their second careers? With the first choice, hitting that second peak is very rare in K-pop, so most aim for the second choice. They continue to create music because they love it, but unfortunately, the spotlight is now away from them. A music video that used to get 20 million views during their peak barely hits over 1 million for them now. The sad reality is, like an aging athlete, these now older K-pop veterans are no longer in the spotlight, no longer in their prime. During the mid-2010s, JYP Entertainment was seeing a surge of growth. GOT7 would be caught up in JYP doing so many activities. The company would be incredibly busy when their 2015 female group TWICE exploded. TWICE would quickly become one of the premier female groups in K-pop, but maintaining that group would take a lot of resources, and JYP would be all too happy to provide that female group with their own management team. JYP's growth would continue well into the late 2010s, as the company would overtake YG Entertainment in terms of overall market value in 2018. This is largely due 
twice in GOT7. But as much as GOT7 gave JYP a surge in popularity, they found themselves lost in the group shuffle. The company would create Day6, Stray Kids, and Itzy, stretching JYP's resources even thinner. In January 2019, JYP would head to Japan to set up a new J-pop group trained in the Korean system. This group would be called Niji Yu which exploded a year later in 2020, and JYP would show no signs of slowing down, as he has another upcoming international group rumored to be revealed in 2021. JYP would have his hands full with all his new groups in just five years, and mainstay GOT7 would be left out in the mix in the end. I will never blame a K-pop group or idol for taking a better opportunity, provided that it's the end of their contract, or if they're being abused or mistreated by their label, or they can reach a settlement with their label. I talked about the concept of a K-pop star making more money elsewhere in my XO video, and making money and branding are very important to idols. GOT7 is no exception. As mentioned earlier, the members of GOT7 had an exit plan after the group would separate from JYP. The members can expand their brand by being solo artists, actors, TV personalities, and YouTube stars, as well as make more money as soloists, as they don't have to split profits seven ways. While the GOT7 members may not get as much attention as they did as one of JYP's premier groups, they now control their fate. The members started to see opportunities elsewhere and now no longer tied down by their former company. It will be weird to see GOT7 no longer with JYP Entertainment, but at the same time, I'm excited to see where each of them go in the future. It's a new trend in K-pop, but many idols are starting to find new life after their K-pop idol career. This trend is so important that I'll be talking about it in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully, GOT7 will follow that trend, do well, and perhaps even become more successful than their GOT7 days. So thank you guys for watching this video, and I'd love to know your take in the comments below. Two other things to mention, if you want real talk with no fluff on how the K-pop industry actually works, then please grab my free ebook by signing up for the email list below. And if you like what we do here at Pop Story, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's not necessary, of course, and we're honored if you just watch our videos. But for those that do support us on Patreon, we have some cool perks waiting. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everyone.